Good morning, everyone. My name is Zongwei Zhou, and thank you for joining my PhD defense. And today I will present the work that we have been done for the past five years. Uh, the title is uh, Towards Annotation Efficient Deep Learning for Computer Aided Diagnosis. Medical images account for about 90% of all healthcare data. And the number of medical images are increasingly uh, rap increased rapidly over years. We believe a computer aided diagnosis can be a great tool for doctors to release their increasing workload. And it can also make a great impact for early disease detection and the diagnosis. In the last few years, deep learning methods have been dominated for building computer-aided diagnosis system. We can use deep learning method to identify, localize, or measure the disease from the image. This method shows a promising or even sometimes amazing result in several medical applications. I give three successful examples here. Using deep learning method to deal with lung cancer, diabetic disease, and skin cancer. These studies demonstrate that deep learning can achieve human level diagnosis uh, precision. However, developing such deep learning model needs a huge amount of annotation cost. And these annotation are largely done by human expert. For example, to train a model for lung cancer uh, detection, human experts have to annotate where is the nodule and how big it is and whether it is benign or malignant. To achieve human level precision, this study utilized more than 42,000 radiologist labeled CT images for just lung cancer diagnosis and a similar story apply for other disease detection. Annotating medical images not, not actually part of the doctor's routine workflow, just the use for training the computer. Also annotating images is not easy. It is tedious, time consuming, and most uh, uh, importantly, it require medical expertise. Not everybody can uh, nail it. So annotation, it's very important for developing high performance deep learning method, but it's also one of the biggest barrier when people want to apply deep learning to other method, to other disease. So this dissertation, we try to address the question, how to develop annotation efficient deep learning without such big annotated data? Computer-aided diagnosis of real disease or quickly response to global pandemic are severely underexplored because of the difficulty of collecting such large amount of annotation, especially when a flood of patients are waiting for results during an outbreak. And doctors do not have time to annotate every case just for algorithm development. And uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, not many doctors have the expertise for novel or real disease. So this diagram shows a simplified workflow about how deep learning engaged into the healthcare in practice. We first uh, obtain the annotation from human expert, and then using this annotation to train the model and uh, fine tune the model, uh, make it better, and eventually validate its performance. When it's good enough, we deploy the deep model into the clinical practice, and perhaps to impact the hospital where lack of exper expertise. To optimize this workflow and to quickly build a effective system, our research goal is to develop a method to minimize the annotation, manual annotation efforts. And there are three specific aims. First, we want to smartly acquire necessary annotation from human expert. 
Second, utilize the existing annotation effectively by designing advanced uh, deep neural network architecture. And finally, extract generic knowledge directly from the unannotated data and to train the model use transport learning to boost the performance. In general, the performance of deep learning will increase as the annotated data increase. This is the reason why we always need uh, more need to collect more data and more annotation. There comes the plateau when adding more data, the performance improvement might not be significant, but this usually doesn't happen in medical imaging because it's not easy to get millions of annotated medical image by human expert. Now we try to make it much better. Aim one suggest to uh, by uh, selecting the most representative and informative samples. Deep model is able to learn faster than random selection. And aim two suggest that by do designing more advanced architecture can improve the model capability and lead to a higher performance. And aim three suggests that by using the uh, generic medical uh, knowledge, the model can behave much more robust, even trained with a small amount of annotated data. Overall, we hypothesize that with a small part of data set annotated, we can deliver deep model that can match or even outperform those models that require to annotate the entire data set. And this uh, hypothesis can be interpreted into two ways. First, maintaining the same performance, our method requires less amount of annotation. As shown here, the gap represents the number of annotation cost that can be reduced by our method. And second, using the same amount of annotation, our method can achieve much higher performance as shown in the vertical gap. Putting all this together, we will I will demonstrate the annotation efficiency of our method in the rest of talk. I'm mainly focused on the methodology development. That means the device, the method are supposed to generalizable to different application, different scenario. So to validate this hypothesis, I have used the nine different medical application in this talk, you, including disease detection, disease segmentation, organ segmentation, and the disease classification. And now, Let's dive into each of the aim. The first aim is to select the necessary samples for annotation. Medical images are generated every day in hospital. With limited budget and time, it is infeasible for us to annotate each and every clinical image that we have. So we try to find an important subset of image for human expert to annotate. The common approach is called human in the loop active learning procedure. It incorporates deep model and the human expert together to precisely detect the disease. Given a pre-trained model, we first tested on, an, on the unlabeled image set and get to the prediction. Based on the prediction, we select the most important image and send them to human expert for annotation. Then we merge the newly annotated data to the labeled set and use this labeled image to fine tune the model and get better uh, prediction, better model. And using this prediction, uh, using this model, uh, on the unlabeled set and get prediction and select the most important image again. As you can see, this is a loop. The key challenge in this loop is, uh, is this part, how to select the most important images. I give an example to classify samples 
into flu and healthy using two symptoms, symptoms, body temperature and the muscle ache. All of the dots here are with color are annotated samples, which means we know their labels. The red dot are flu sample and the green dot are healthy samples. And A and B here are unlabeled image, are unlabeled samples. Given the limited budget, only one can be annotated. Which sample would you prefer to annotate first, A or B? If we look at A, it can already be classified by as a flu by the current model. So we don't expect a major change in terms of a decision boundary when annotating sample A. However, sample B is more ambiguous to the current model. Whether it's uh, annotated as a flu or healthy will dramatically change the decision boundary of the current model. That's why we believe that B might be more important to, to be annotated first than sample A. And we can measure this importance of the sample based on their uncertainty. This approach is called uncertainty-based selection, which always selects the sample with high uncertainty. Another selection criteria is called a diversity-based selection. The idea is to select the most diverse and the representative samples to be annotated first. Here we have sample B, C, D, and we only have a budget to select the two of them to be annotated. So which two samples would you prefer to annotate first? Clearly C and D looks very similar to each other in the feature space. So it might not be worse to annotate both of them. On the other hand, B and C looks more diverse and representative because they are far from each other in the feature space. So annotating B and C might be a better choice than annotating C and D. We can make a decision by computing the diversity of each samples. As a result, B and C shows the highest diversity and B and D also shows pretty good one, good diversity, but C and D shows uh, they are too similar. They show the low diversity. So we should, as a result, we should select the B and C in this regard. Diversity-based selection aim to select the new samples to be annotated first in which they are very different from each other and they are different from the existing labeled samples as well. To realize it, we create a diversity matrix where each row and each column represent the sample in the data set. The cell in the matrix is the similarity between the two samples. For example, here, it's a similarity between B and D. The goal is to find a sub matrix that have the largest diversity compared with the entire matrix. This looks straightforward, but in the real world application, this matrix is a super big because the number of rows and the number of columns are equal to the entire number of images in the data set. Solving this optimal sub matrix is an NP hard problem and it is computationally intractable. And our contribution is to compute diversity more efficiently with the help of data augmentation. As shown in this example, data augmentation refers to augmenting different patches from the original image. This approach is widely used in medical imaging because we usually don't have enough training data. And the data augmentation is a great way to automatically generate many data for us to train, to train the model. These patches generate from the same image 
share the same label. For example, here the cat, and they are expected to have the similar prediction by the current model. With this assumption, we can just measure the consistency among the predictions of the same uh, image. If the prediction of these patches are consistent, we find that the model is pretty sure about the, what is happening in the image. So no need, this image is no need to be annotated at this moment. If the prediction are inconsistent, that means the image is more important to be annotated, have a more impact to uh, improve the model performance. So instead of solving the huge diversity matrix, we can simply compute the consistency of each small matrix associated with each sample. Computing each matrix is manageable and uh, more effective because the number of rows and the number of columns equal to the number of augmentation applied for each sample. And we are able to discover the most representative and informative sample through this approach. So we hypothesize that uh, wisely select the important sample can dramatically reduce the annotation cost. And here the gap represents the amount of uh, annotation cost that can be reduced. And we verify this hypothesis in the three uh, experiment. So here the solid line, the solid red line is our proposed algorithm, which called active continue fine tuning. And the, and the gray line is a random selection. And here the upper bound is the uh, performance that can be achieved by using 100% label set. So as you can see, by active learning, it can quickly improve the model performance with lim uh, very uh, less amount of annotation. So we conclude from the three application that using our ACFT algorithm, it can reduce annotation cost by over 80% compared with random selection. How to get this number? As I said, this gap represents the annotation cost that can be reduced. So here the x-axis represents the uh, percentage of the label that we need and the y is the performance. So how to calculate this number? Uh, it's just uh, uh, from these two uh, line. And we find that for colonoscopy frame classification, it can reduce 81.5% annotation cost. And for polyp detection, it reduced 86%. And for pulmonary embryo detection, it can reduce 80% of annotation, which is a lot. It's a save a lot of uh, time and money. And I don't think this is pretty small because the access is plot as a log scale. So it looks small, but it's actually a big gap here. All right. So the limitation is that the current active learning procedure can only suggest the important lesion every time. If a patient have a multiple lesions, the active procedure might suggest to annotate the same patient multiple times, each time on different lesion. For example, this time, it annotated this patient on this lesion and then come to this patient and maybe it will return back to the same patient. That means the human expert have to repeatedly go through the same patient multiple times, which may not be efficient. So what we wish to accomplish is to select in a patient level. By transition from the lesion level annotation to patient level annotation, doctor no longer have to repeatedly go through the same patient multiple times to detect all the disease that patient might have, but they can only go through it once and annotate all the disease simultaneously. So this work advises us that not all data are, is created equal. 
our job is to find the most essential data point that can increase the deep model performance at the lowest annotation cost as possible. So M1 have led to three publications. We first present this work in 2017, which was also one of the earliest work I have done in the lab. And we apply this technique to many other medical application and also validate the usefulness uh, in a natural image task. And uh, this work have a potential clinical impact because the continuous learning capability of deep learning model in college data, label, and model reuse significantly improve the training efficiency. And an efficient human in the loop procedure assist radiologists in quickly dismissing the patient with negative result and therefore dramatically reduce the burden of annotation. And finally, an instant online feedback process make it possible for CAD system to be self-training and self-improving via continuous fine tuning. After collecting certain amount of annotation, my second aim is to develop advanced deep neural net architecture. And uh, we think the better architecture can lead to higher performance in disease classification, detection, and segmentation. So in this study, we have been focusing focus on the uh, image segmentation task. Image segmentation help to quantitatively measure the size of lesion and it can make the surgery more precise. So it partition a, a image into multiple pieces uh, to ease the ana analysis. So in the image, it look like this. If you want to segment the organ from the image, if you want to segment the lesion from the image, so what uh, the human expert need to teach the model, it's the mask of the object that you wish to segment. The most popular architecture for image segmentation is called a UNET because they look like a capital U. The input is the original image and the output is the segmentation mask that you wish the model to segment. And this architecture consists of an encoder and a decoder. The encoder map the images by original image into the deep latent feature. And the decoder map the latent feature into the uh, segmentation mask. As you see, the model extract the different level of image features. And we hypothesize that by aggregating multi-scale feature can lead to a powerful model for image segmentation not only just the level four, but take level three, level two, and a level one feature into the consideration. This result in our novel architecture design, which we call the UNET++. Why it's a two plus plus? Because we have a two innovation on top of the original UNET. First, the first is to redesign the skip connection and uh, to aggregate multi-level, multi-scale feature. We compare the performance of the original UNET with level one, level two, level three, and level four on different medical applications. The result shows that it is inconclusive which level of image uh, feature contributes to the most for different application. For example, uh, neuronal structure uh, segmentation, level four gives the best performance. While for the cell and uh, brain tumor segmentation, level three gives the best performance. So this is the motivation behind our UNET++, who aggregate multi-scale, multi-level feature from different, um, different depths of the, of the network, therefore result in a significantly high, higher 
segmentation performance compared with each individual unit. And the second innovation is the introduction of deep supervision. Different from the original UNET architecture, UNET++ uh, provide additional supervision for each level of image feature. So we find the deep, deep supervision can stabilize the model training and it is also enable model pruning at the deploy time. This is very important feature here. So because the people always complain about the deep, deep model uh, have a too many parameters and it take large memory and the computational power and it's not easy to deploy into the ordinary desktop or PC in clinical practice. And our unit plus plus can be pruned during the deploy time because uh, based on the clinical need, that means this branch or this branch can be cut after model training and the leftover network can still perform uh, pretty good precisely and thanks to the deep supervision. We evaluate our UNET++ on five different image segmentation tasks, including neuronal structure segmentation, cell and nuclear segmentation, brain tumor and liver segmentation. The red bar is our UNET++ and the uh, yellow one is the original UNET. UNET++ here is an intermediate uh, architecture that we devised which is the simplified version of UNET++, but still can produce great segmentation result. We compare this architecture using more uh, sophisticated uh, feature extract extractor as backbone, such as the VGG19, uh, ResNet152, and DenseNet201. Statistic analysis shows that our UNET++ significantly outperforms the original UNET architecture on every tasks. Besides so many uh, technical detail and uh, quantitative result, let's look at how good the UNET++ segment liver tumor and the liver organ from CT image, for example. This is a patient with liver tumor. The left figure shows the original CT image, which is the input of UNET++. The middle one shows the ground truth that given by human expert. And the right one shows the prediction of UNET++. The first point I would like to make is the pr prediction of UNET++ are very similar to human annotation. And the second point I would like to emphasize throughout my talk is that annotating work is extremely time consuming and costly. In progress. Um, sorry. So you can easily tell from the ground truth here for each patient doctor have to sit down and spend a long time in front of the computer to uh, give the annotation for the model training. So we should really appreciate this annotation effort. And this effort will eventually make a great contribution because the UNET++ trained with, train, yeah, because the UNET++ trained with the annotation can do a great job in segmenting many, many more unseen CT scan, which in turn reduce the doctor's workload in the future. So I would like to show you another example, which have uh, uh, this example, uh, the person have a mostly healthy liver, but with a very tiny tumor in the middle. And our UNET++ is able to identify this small lesion. Let me see when it comes. Maybe it's already passed. 
Yeah, you see here, there's a, uh, there's a dot in the liver. This is a very small liver lesion. And the ground truth show this is a liver tumor and the UNAT plus plot also able to detect it. This is a very encouraging result because it shows that our UNAT plus plus not only sensitive to detect the different uh, different size of uh, liver tumor, but it also it shows greater specificity, which means that if it is a healthy liver, UNAT plus plus will not generate too many false positives. Okay, I will make it faster for the demonstration. So you can see these are all uh, healthy liver and the UNAT plus plus does not generate uh, any false positive here. Oh, here is a one false positive, I guess. No, but in general, it's a pretty good performance. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so in this work, we learned that a deep neural network mm -hmm. can extract a vision representation through multiple somatic levels. And uh, we, we learned that we must fully integrate each and every level of representation for a more precise and comprehensive result for segmentation, especially. We first present UNAT++ in 2018 and then extend this work into a journal version in 2019. And this article was ran, ranked as the one of the most popular ones in the IEEE TMI journal. And the UNAT++ have a potential clinical impact. First, image segmentation can help compute clinically more accurate and desirable imaging biomarkers and pre 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 oh, precision so measurement. And the second, now. Uh, any question? Next. Uh, Dr. Liang, could you help uh, mute the audience? Thank you. Yeah, first point is the image segmentation. It's very useful in the clinical practice. And the second, model pruning have the potential to exert important impact on deploy CAD system into a mobile device and ordinary desktop or laptop PCs in clinical practice. We have made the UNAT++ open science, releasing code and the model to let other people play around. I would like to share some of the results obtained by other independent research group who use the UNET++. As you can see, UNET++ achieved notably higher performance than the original UNET on, on a, variety, a variety of tasks, including such as uh, COVID-19 segmentation, fiber tra tracing, and uh, spin, spin uh, segmentation. And these tasks are using different image modality, such as uh, uh, CT, MRI, fundus image, and so on. This also shows the robustness and the generalizability of UNAT++ on different medical specialties, not only just the five tasks reported in our paper. I'm always very grateful to see other teams uh, adopt our UNAT++ for different purpose and applications and perhaps producing even stronger uh, uh, algorithm on top of it. So far, we have only discussed how to utilize annotated image, but it is also important to recognize the power of all these unannotated image. Therefore, my third aim is to extract the generic knowledge directly from them so that the deep model can translate this generic knowledge to many, many other imaging tasks. Now the question is how to extract this knowledge. 
we observe that medical images are embedded with consistent and the recurrent anatomical structure. So we hypothesize that using this information, we can empower deep model with generic and a transferable image representation. Here shows the diagram of our proposed framework. We designed it as a simple image restoration task. Given an image, we first deform it and then feed it into a deep model. Let the model learn to restore the original image. To deform the image, we propose four different image transformation approaches, including nonlinear transformation, local pixel shuffling, outer cutout, and inner cutout. Each of them allow the model to learn from different perspectives. For example, it can learn organ appearance, organ texture, and the local boundary, and organ spatial layout and the geometry, and many, many more. We found that learning from multiple perspectives can help to build the generic and the transferable models. Actually, we are the first one to build the generic pre-trained 3D model for medical image analysis. We name it Models Genesis. It learns the image representation directly from medical image itself without any human manual annotation. And it leads to powerful target models for many um, medical image applications through transfer learning. Model Genesis shows higher precision and more robust performance than existing method on five uh, applications, including lung nodule false positive reduction from CT images, lung nodule segmentation, pulmonary embolism false positive reduction from CTPA, and the liver segmentation from CT, and the brain tumor segmentation from MRI. And we pre trained the model genesis on more than 800 chest CT images and then trans translate, transfer the image a representation to different target task. We compare models genesis with other approaches, including random initialization, fully supervised pre-training, and self-supervised pre-training. The bodied number here in the table are the best one for each application. And we highlight cells in light blue if the two methods are uh, comparable in performance. So in all five applications, model genesis shows the most robust result overall. Moreover, we find the model genesis can, it's an annotation efficient method because it can reduce the annotation effort by at least 30% or uh, in general in all five uh, target tasks. So here, for example, the ECC means uh, pulmonary embolism force possible reduction, and the X is the percentage of labeled data that we need, and the Y will be the performance that the model achieve. The red curve is our model's genesis, and the green curve is the learning from scratch. As you can see, by achieving the really high performance, model's genesis only need like 30% of labeled data and it's achieved the almost similar performance than using the 70% of data when doing random initialization. And this same observation are applicable for other applications. So model genesis shows the generalizability within the same image modality. That means if the model is pre-trained on the chest CT images, it is more beneficial on the target task that is in the chest area and in the CT modality. And in the future, we intend to collect the medical images from different modality and pre-train modality oriented generic model for improve the accuracy in the particular modality. And moreover, we intend to collect the medical image from the different body region and pre-train the generic model 
for um, organ oriented uh, model. And it will, for example, the genesis liver, when you train this model on the liver and uh, present into in the CT, MRI, and uh, X-ray, whatever modality, and this model will be specifically useful for the target task, which is happened in the liver area. So we hope that this effort can lead to the holy grail of models genesis, which help the model to learn effective image, uh, medical image features across disease, organs, and modality. And this work was firstly presented in 2019 and it received the Young Scientist Award. And it was also published in Medical Image Analysis Journal and it received the Best Paper Award. So this work have a potential clinical impact as well. Uh, instead of uh, building a model from scratch, which demanding numerous data and label acquisition, a smaller data set can be used to efficiently fine tune the existing model. And second, generic pre-trained model can serve as the primary resource source for transfer learning for many other medical imaging appli application and lead to the accelerated training and improved performance. We also made the development of model genesis open science and invite researchers around the world to contribute to this effort. Again, these results are produced by other research group who utilize our model's genesis. As seen by fine tuning our model's genesis can achieve significantly uh, better performance gain in many other application, both in segmentation and uh, classification. The improved performance are obtained from different uh, image modality, such as uh, MRI, are CT or histology images. And I wish more teams will find the model genesis useful and I'm willing to help to make, make it stronger and more generalizable. To summarize, the main point of my research goal is to reduce the human manual annotation cost. Each aim specifically focus on the component in the workflow, how the deep model uh, engage in the healthcare. And first, we wish to select the most important sample for annotation. Second, with a certain amount of annotation, we want to develop a, a better model, advanced model to make a good use of this annotation. And third, we wish to um, extract the generic knowledge directly from the unannotated sample and uh, reduce the um, annotation cost in the many uh, target application further. So as we said, we hypothesize that we hypothesize that with a small part of a data set annotated, we can deliver the uh, deep model that can match or even outperform those that are required to annotate the entire data set. And yes, we can. <laughs> this is the main conclusion. So first, we develop the active uh, continuous fine tuning. And the idea is to select the most informative and uh, representative samples, which can uh, fast the model training and achieve good performance with a low amount of annotation cost. And second, we develop a model, uh, sorry, uh, UNET++, which engage the aggregation of multi-scale image features and improve the uh, model capacity when dealing with a certain amount of annotation. And finally, we develop a model's genesis, which establishes the basic knowledge in medical image and the, uh, make the model more robust, even if the amount of annotated data is small. So this research direction is promising, exciting, and significant, especially for medical image analysis. Because of the difficulty of annotating medical images, 
it is not easy to collect millions of annotations for most medical applications. Therefore, most medical applications fell into this blue area. And especially in this area, the red learning curve is uh, much better uh, compared with uh, the traditional uh, conventional deep learning approach. And the red curve represents the annotation efficient deep learning. To further uh, validate the annotation efficiency of the proposed method, we participate in several imaging competition. We first uh, uh, joined the pulmonary embryon uh, detection competition, uh, which was uh, organized by a group from MIT. And we ranked the number three uh, among all the, all the teams. And this, uh, our PE CAD was developed use developed using our own data set and was directly evaluated on the images provided by the challenge uh, without using any training data from the challenge. So this result shows our system is fairly robust to different uh, data set for the same task. And also UNET++ and model genesis were used for liver tumor segmentation competition and we are ranked number one among all the teams. And this work was done by Siobhan in his uh, uh, master degree thesis. And I'm also currently write a book uh, chapter that give an overview of AI in medical imaging uh, interpretation. I review several unique opportunity that AI can bring to medical imaging. And also I discussed some of the barriers barriers when applying AI method to medical image. The lack of annotation is of course, one of the biggest challenges that we met as I have been focusing on through this talk. And I think contributing to this chapter is a great opportunity for me to summarize my PhD research and extend a broader uh, view to the entire picture of uh, medical image analysis. <laughs> I highlight PhD here as uh, people who don't give up. People said that earning a PhD is not easy and I agree. There are so many struggling time and so many distractions, so many deadlines, so many paper rejections one of the most uh, uh, important reasons to help me went through this uh, is uh, my wonderful advisor, uh, Dr. Liang, and you truly teach me a lot of a lot over years. And by the way, who also didn't give up on me, uh, even if when I came to the lab, I was so bad at uh, English writing, uh, talking, and uh, listening. You really make my PhD year easier and more enjoyable. And I also want to appreciate all the uh, valuable feedbacks and helps from the committee members, Dr. Shardleaf, uh, Dr. Greens, Dr. Lees, Dr. Lee, as well as uh, Dr. Godway and uh, Dr. Deborah Conda. And uh, thank you everyone again for joining my defense and uh, please, if you have any questions, comments or suggestions, let me know. Uh, thank you very much.